Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my MySQL and SQL tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to explain what a database is, what MySQL is, what a relational data management system is, what SQL is, show you how to create a table, and go through all the data types available to you within SQL. There are many common database misconceptions. Some people think they are hard to develop. Not true. Many people think they're very expensive. And in actuality, there are free databases available, and some people think the free ones are the best. And for those people that don't know how to start using them, you're in the right place. MySQL, in actuality, is a completely free database server that many consider to be the best. Heck, even NASA uses it. So do you need one? Do you have trouble managing your data? Do you have massive amounts of data that is too complicated to store in a spreadsheet? Would you like to provide access to your data on the internet? Or would you like to be able to sort through and analyze all of your data better? If you answered any of these questions yes, yes you do need a database. What is MySQL? Well, a database is a highly structured place you use to store information of pretty much any type. You organize your information in a series of tables with rows and columns like a spreadsheet. So what's a relational database management system? The relational word refers to the fact that the database organizes data based off of how it relates to the other data. And if you structure the database in the right way, it can access millions of bits of data in seconds. The management system provides you with the ability to access, add to, and delete the data within. So what's SQL? You use structured query language to issue commands to MySQL. Remember, you create tables of data in a database. So how do you create a table? Here is exactly the code, the SQL code, that you would use to create a table within a database. First, start off with the keyword create table, followed by whatever you want your table to be called. Then you have a bracket, and here we're defining some different variables that will go within the table. First, I have customer name, and I'm telling the database, or the data server, that information is going to be of a character type, meaning letters, and I expect it to be 15 characters in length. In the customer address field you see here, I do pretty much the same thing. You can see I end each one of these definitions with a comma. And then finally, I define that I want to be able to store a telephone number, and the telephone number is going to be an integer or a number that is not going to have decimal places. Then we end the whole thing with another bracket followed by a semicolon. So what do you need to create a database? Well, you'll probably host your database on someone else's computer and then access it through the internet. I write about internet-based technologies, so that is how I'll approach this subject. ISPs provide you with a database pre-installed, such as GoDaddy or what have you, but you can also access them with a terminal or the ISP's proprietary software. Putty, for example, is a commonly used terminal, but you'll probably just use the ISP's personal system. If you use GoDaddy as your ISP, chances are you're using a program called PHP MyAdmin. This is the most common way ISPs provide access to databases, but in this tutorial I'm going to completely focus on teaching you SQL. So how do you log in? After you log into your account with your user ID and password, you'll be able to start creating databases and tables with SQL. You log into MySQL by typing the following command, MySQL, space, then a dash, followed by U, whatever your user ID name is, and then another slash NP. Whenever you're done or whenever you hit enter, the MySQL server is going to request that you enter your password, and then you're in the system. So how do you create a database? To create a database, just type the following create database and then whatever you want your database name to be. This creates the storage area for my company's customers. You can name the database whatever you'd like. And then with the use command you type in use followed by the name of the database you want to edit. Before you can start editing a table you need to select it. And what do you select it with? Keyword select followed by the word database two brackets and a semicolon. And if you type this in, the, on the right side, you'll see exactly what would be displayed in your terminal. So, let's create a more complicated table. Here I'm creating a table called Customers. The first variable I'm going to define is first name, followed by the keyword V-A-R-C-H-A-R. What this is saying is first name, the variable, is more than likely going to contain no more than 15 characters. But unlike the character variable type, variable characters could go over that 15th character limit. With not null, I am telling the data server, or MySQL, that this 
value is going to be a requirement, meaning that if somebody inputs information into this specific row of this specific table, they must type in a first name. It's a requirement. Null means non-entered value or a non-value. I do pretty much the same thing with the variable last name. Here I create the state variable and I say it's going to be exactly two characters. Again, not null. I'm going to put a default of PA since I live in Pennsylvania. Most of my customers are probably going to be there too. Then I define that I'd like a birth date variable set up followed by the variable name date. Again, it's going to be required so I have that not null in there. And with the ENUM data type, I am defining that I will only accept the values of M or F. No other values will be acceptable. With the cust ID variable, I'm going to get more into keys in a further tutorial. Don't really worry too much about what this says, but basically I'm telling it that it's going to be an integer or a number with no decimal places. It's going to be unsigned, which means I am not going to allow negative numbers to be entered. It's going to be required, so I have not null there. Auto increment means that I want the data server to automatically add one to the previous customer ID, and it's going to do that all for me. And then, like I said, I'll describe primary keys at a later date. And then I define another variable called last meeting, and I'm giving it the variable type of timestamp, which I'll explain to you in a short period of time. It's basically just a representation of time. And then I'm going to create the final variable here called money owed. It is a float, which means it's a number that does have a decimal place. And I'm going to say that that field can be left empty by defining it with the keyword null. So what type of numeric data types are there in SQL? Well, you can see all of them right here. I'm not going to bother going through all of them. Pause your movie and look at them as you like, but it's basically integers or numbers without decimal places, and then you have floats and doubles, which do allow for decimal places. String types in SQL? Well, you have the character, character string with a fixed length. That is what a character variable type is. Then you have the VAR character type, what this is saying is you don't really necessarily know how many characters you're going to put into this field. Then you have blob, which contains an immense amount of text. ENUM, which is used to store a predefined set of values, like we did before with male and female. And then you have set, and it's a list of legal possible character strings. Unlike the ENUM variable type, though, a set can contain multiple values in comparison to the one legal value that is found with the variable type ENUM. And that is how they are different. Then we have also some different data types available to you regards to date and time. And you see down here, here's the timestamp. Basically, it is a time value with the format of four numbers representing the year, two representing the months, two representing days, two representing hours, two representing minutes, and finally two representing seconds. And that's what all that information means. In the next tutorial, I am going to go through all of the SQL statements, such as describe, insert, select, where, comments, operators, count, and group by. And there's a link to that tutorial below. Hope you enjoy this. See you next time.